So the ideas, the musical ideas for the composition come from a whole bunch of different places, as does the name. And they were just all things that were bouncing around in my head in my life at the time. Um, it was a, a really productive time of my life. Uh, I was writing a children's opera at the same time and all sorts of stuff. I was uh, working on some uh, music software um, with a friend who I had made sort of via correspondence working uh, both remotely for a company and she was in Vermont in the US and she's one of the people who it who the piece is dedicated to it's also dedicated to um, the horn player who played it the first time who it was written for and um, and so uh, this educator in um, and colleague in um, in Vermont was uh, creating this huge library of learning resources and some of those um, library of learning resources for music included a big long list of uh, modes and scales so if you've ever looked in um, if you ever looked in Sibelius it's got this thing called the Sibelius worksheet creator that's Sibelius software the, the computer program and inside the worksheet creator there's a, a whole list of modes and I went to some uh, pentatonic modes and saw something like 27 pentatonic modes or something which I found really funny because although I'm aware that I'm aware of two pentatonic modes that I had seen named before this the major and the minor pentatonic mode um, I wasn't I'd never really sort of sat and thought of course a, a pentatonic mode is any scale you like with five notes so I, mathematically I guess there could be gazillions of them and it shouldn't have surprised me that there were 27 just in this list and so um, uh, that is actually where the mode that I used in the piece came from, from that list, and I chose a Japanese mode. And I did that because I wanted to give myself a narrative to write to. And so the narrative that I was writing to was about a character in a book called Kaede, um, from a, a book of um, a series of books by uh, Leanne Hearn. And uh, they were just some books that I was enjoying in my spare time at the time so I thought well that gives me I'm not as much trying to tell a story but I'm trying to write a character piece about this character who is very strong but also always kind of sad um, and then another little bit of um, Japanese influence that came into there was um, discovering when I went to look in, in the same computer programs bits of uh, it had a, a, a whole bunch of melodies from different cultures and there was Sakura which of course I already knew um, Cherry Blossom uh, song for kids. I think that um, I played it very badly on the violin uh, some years earlier, and um, and so I suddenly thought, oh look, that 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 tune uses that mode. That, that those two sort of fit together. So rather than necessarily just composing with a Japanese mode, why don't I actually make the piece a kind of well, I guess you could call it theme and variations if you want. You could call it. Um, you know, an exploration of that because it's also got original, plenty of original material that I wrote in there too. Um, so yeah, so so that those are the main in ingredients um, for the music, where the music came from. The only other thing uh, th that I would uh, mention that's also in there is the um, uh, the piano figuration later, and on screen right now uh, there's going to be a bar number because I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, but um, the, the, the later piano figuration uh, borrows um, a, a, a figuration from a piece by John Cage called In a Landscape. Skempton was a great influence on me and that he himself was influenced by the experimental movement right back in the late 60s and early 70s and John Cage was in many ways the founder of, of a lot of that thinking really super interesting guy most people know John Cage for his what we would consider even nowadays strangely weird and wacky stuff such as his silent piece four minutes and 33 which requires the player to not play anything for that long or any other length of time um, or 
uh, some of his um, what we call aleatory pieces, uh, if you like, totes random. So pieces where uh, you know you roll dice uh, or do other similar um, random processes to, to choose what's going to happen with the sound. So that's what we kind of know John Cage for. We don't necessarily know him for his stunningly beautiful piano music. And um, I had known him and read not not only listened to his music and studied his scores, but read a lot of his books. He's an incredible writer, an amazing poet as well. Um, and it was utterly shocking to me to discover uh, in my early 20s that he had written this amazing piano piece as well, uh, many years before he then stuck paper clips and plasticine and all sorts of other things inside the piano keys uh, as he explored the idea of the prepared piano. So he's just a man with so many ideas that I wanted to take one little idea of his and put it into this piece too. And so that's where the, it's, I haven't actually taken anything out of his piece, um, but what I've done is I've looked at how the piano part, the shape of the piano part works at the start of that piece. And if you compare the piano part in my piece and the start of Inner Landscape, you'll definitely see the similarities.